to count the countdown to liftoff for that space flight that's set to make history, sending four civilians into orbit with no astronauts after those big launches by Richard Branson and Jeff Bezos. Transportation correspondent Gio Benito is at the Kennedy Space Center for us this morning. Good morning, Jen Gio. Hey there, Michael. Good morning to you. Yeah, I'm wearing this flight suit because in just a moment, we're going to show you exactly how this crew trained for zero gravity. What these four are about to do has never been done before by any other civilian on planet Earth. This morning, SpaceX prepping for what could be its most groundbreaking launch yet. Four civilians are set to orbit the Earth with no professional astronauts on board, going farther than any other private citizen has ever gone for three days. Just months after Richard Branson and Jeff Bezos hit the skies, now it's Jared Isaacman, a 38-year-old billionaire who bought four seats, which typically sell at 55 million each for an undisclosed amount, giving three away to fundraise for St. Jude Children's Hospital. Getting a seat, engineer and Air Force vet Chris Zimbrowski, geoscience professor Dr. Cyan Proctor, and Haley Arsenault. As a child, she was a patient at St. Jude. Now she works there. The fact that I'm going to be the youngest American in space really is just absolutely mind-blowing to me. And then I'll be the first pediatric cancer survivor in space, which I'm honestly most excited about because I just think about the kids that are going to come after me and what this is going to mean to them. And Dr. Proctor will become just the fourth black American woman to go to space. The flight is risky. SpaceX has never sent its crew dragon this far into space, 360 miles above the Earth's surface, way farther than Branson and Bezos and even the International Space Station. To get ready for weightlessness, the crew boarded the Zero-G plane here on Earth. And so did we. This is how astronauts train. On the Earth's surface, I weigh 175 pounds. Up here, zero. Zero G inviting us on as pilots fly the plane in specific maneuvers to replicate the microgravity of space. That feeling of being in zero gravity is so unique and undescribable. And you don't want that first experience to be when you're, you know, in space and things like that. You'll be disoriented and yeah, just an incredible experience right there. And in zero G, you don't know what's up, what's down, and that's why it's so important for astronauts to train like this. Now, you might be asking, what's the point? Well, Elon Musk has said that he wants humans to eventually have a second home on Mars and that this is a first step to get there. So this launch tomorrow night, 8 p.m. Eastern, and we will be right there. Michael. All right, Gio, 175 pounds. You weigh anything in space. Forget diet. Just go to space. That's how you do it? All right, we're going to bring in our ABC News contributor and aviation expert, Colonel Steve Ganyard. And, and Colonel Ganyard, we've seen what Jeff Bezos and Richard Branson have done um, over the last few months. How does this flight stack up to that? Well, Michael, you remember that, that Bezos and Branson were having this, this uh, quibble about who reaches the edge of space. Um, and they aren't even in the same league as Musk. As Gio pointed out there, <clears throat> this flight's going to go out to 360 miles. It's going to go around the Earth uh, for three days. This is sort of like the difference between the, uh, the tilt-a-whirl at, at the county fair and, uh, and Space Mountain at Disneyland. There's really no comparison. <laughs> it, it, but let's talk about the risks that are involved with it, because this <laughs> vessel hasn't gone through the same testing as we'd see from a NASA aircraft or, or a spacecraft. Is that a concern? Yeah, Michael, I think those, those criticisms aren't, uh, they aren't entirely fair. The only thing that's different here on this Dragon capsule is they took the docking mechanism that uh, would normally connect into the International Space Station, and they put that, that cupola, this, this beautiful uh, ability to, to look around when they're uh, up in space. So I, I think that's the, really the only change. Other than that, that whole Dragon capsule is the same one that NASA certified and flew their own astronauts on. And this flight is completely autonomous. So what does that mean for the future of space travel? Michael, I think we may look back on this flight and think that it was one of the mo most momentous flights in the history of manned space flight. Why? Because we're taking four untrained civilians and we're sending them into orbit on a fully autonomous flight. This is essentially the end of astronauts. We don't need people who've been trained for years just to go into space. We're now going to make space reliable, routine, repeatable, and that's what's going to have to happen if we're going to colonize the moon and colonize Mars. I think that this flight will be a big step on the way to that journey.
All right, Colonel Ganyer, thank you so much. Appreciate your information, as always. And you two were looking like you're ready to go. <laughs> right after you. <laughs> Rob, was like, Rob was like, I'm colonizing know, right here. I'm, I'm happy. I'm, I love Earth. I'm really, I'm really good. But, you know, we'll see what the future holds. Yeah, you never know. Yeah. Thank you, Michael. <laughs> well, hey there, GMA fans. Robin Roberts here. Thanks for checking out our YouTube channel. Lots of great stuff here. So go on, click the subscribe button right over, right over here here to get more of awesome videos and content from GMA every day, anytime. We thank you for watching and we'll see you in the morning on GMA.